is Abhishek Manu Singh Vee, looking rather dapper in a Friday night shirt, it appears. Is that your celebratory shirt? Are you celebrating today, Abhishek Manu Singh Vee? You've had a couple of setbacks in the trial court, high court. Finally, the Supreme Court has given you some reason to smile. Well, Rajdeep, fortunately, uh, uh, or unfortunately, all that I'm doing is resting my tired bones after a very busy day. And I'm enjoying it very much. So you and one or two other programs are the only interruptions. Otherwise, I'm relaxing and doing nothing, going out nowhere, doing nothing. That's a rather that's a rather dapper shirt you're wearing for someone who says he's doing nothing <laughs> on a Friday night. Well, uh, I think uh, we need to just wear what we are comfortable in. And I don't need to keep up any, you know, particular pretense. So I like the colors and I like bright colors. Okay. Even if they are misunderstood. So I think it's a fair point. Okay. Well, we, we won't go into lawyers and what they do and don't do. But what you did today is get Rahul Gandhi a big breather. Let's, let's get this clear. Is this, in your view, a breather, relief, complete victory for Rahul Gandhi? Because the court has made it very clear. They're staying the sentencing. The conviction still remains open uh, for you to challenge. Uh, which you presumably, of course, will continue to do so. And the court also passed certain uh, certain observations saying Rahul Gandhi should be more careful about his observations. Are you seeing today as a complete victory or not? I, I understand fully your necessity for the anchor to ask questions as a devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. But let me answer very pointedly and briefly. Uh, this is the final judgment, Rajdeep. There is nothing above the Supreme Court on stay of conviction. This is it. Having lost in earlier rounds, we have now succeeded. Therefore, the judgment of the Supreme Court grants stay of conviction permanently. Point one. Point two, mm -hmm. what is left is something totally different. That's an argument on the merits. Namely, that he has been convicted only by one court. He hasn't lost in three courts on conviction. That conviction is pending appeal in the first appellate court. That will take its own course. But so long as the stay of conviction holds and he does not get convicted you know, in appellate levels, uh, uh, he his 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 disqualification ceases immediately. Thirdly, uh, you know, it, as I've been saying, it, it all depends on your way of looking at it. Somebody can say it's nine, the glass is nine tenths full. Somebody can say it's nine tenths empty. I like to see the elephant, the body, even the tail. I don't like to see just the hair at the end of the tail. This is a complete victory for Rahul Gandhi. I say so with great uh, uh, humility. Mm -hmm. uh, the judges appear to have read every word of the entire record. We were stunned. There's hundreds of pages and they were quoting evidence, all three of them. Uh, they have taken a reasoned call. They have pointed out several patent errors. To give you just one example out of many, if something is bailable, namely bail can be granted by the police, you don't have to go to the courts for it. If you can't arrest without warrant, what is known as non-cognizable in technical parlance, if you can settle between you and me, individuals where the state doesn't come in, what is known as compoundable, where the maximum punishment is simple imprisonment of two years. By the way, the IPC has only 22 provisions with simple, which means it's the lowest form, the least serious form. Despite these four things, if the, if the High Court says it's a grievous offense, as if uh, 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 Rahul Gandhi is a habitual offender, serious offense, and then calls it moral turpitude, specifically noted by the judges. And one more example, then I'll come to your point about the... Um, uh, conduct uh, in the speech of Rahul Gandhi. Uh, the other point is very important also. You know, if it's one year, 11 months, 29 days, no disqualification mm -hmm. kicks in. Mm -hmm. When you decide to punish me for the maximum, you jump straight to two years. And by the way, as far as I know, I have no case of criminal defamation where the maximum two years is imposed. When you jump to impose it, you can theoretically do it, but you have to give reasons. You have to articulate why somebody who is not been convicted anywhere in any court as a first time offender with a first time one level conviction should be given the maximum because that maximum matters. It has a consequence of disqualification, a very serious consequence, possibly eight years. And therefore, the judge is completely not dealt with this, which is what the court pointed out. No, the court, has, no, no, I, no, 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 the court has pointed out that the lower courts did not deal with the, did not apply their mind while confirming the two year sentencing of Rahul Gandhi. But they haven't given Rahul Gandhi a clean chit. Let's be very clear for the comments he made. In fact, they make observations that people in public life should be more careful. Uh, let me come back to my elephant and uh, yes. tail and herring. Now, you see, there is no such thing as a clean chit. 
this was an appeal on stay of conviction we've got a stay of conviction the matter is over we have won completely mm -hmm. in the course of that they have added a few lines which is only this that had the rafael judgment come earlier it would have acted as a guide post to mr rahul gandhi but there is a bit of a speculation because that judgment came in november 2019 rahul gandhi's kolar speech is april 2019 no doubt they made an observation that you know people might should exercise restraint but that is a matter for be decided by trial in the conviction court or the appeal court they nevertheless thought it sufficiently fit that it is not something warranting a disqualification for one more day and that's the bottom line now it depends on which way you look at it i'm sure mm -hmm. uh, you know there would be people who would say that there is possibly a victory for them in that well good luck to them i'm so, happy for them so you're saying as of tomorrow you, you believe as of monday morning rahul gandhi should be reinstated you're saying that because remember there's a precedent of a uh, M mp from lakshwadi mohammad fazal 62 days the lok sabha speaker sat on his reinstatement do you expect Perhaps rahul gandhi you, to be reinstated monday two answers rajdeep if you take 24 hours to evict me from the lok sabha please reinstate me in the lok sabha in at least 48 hours mm -hmm. you know this is petty politics this is nothing requiring any opinion or any great complex issue of law politics is based on large heartedness also it is based on give and take the entire reason for rahul gandhi the sole reason for rahul gandhi being out of parliament is disqualification when the foundation of that is gone the building the imarat cannot stand therefore consequence of disqualification must go when it will be done you have to ask the speaker i don't think it should take more than 24 to 48 hours the time it took to evict him from parliament right and as far as your second question is concerned i don't think that uh, there is uh, uh, you know you perhaps don't know that i did the lakshadweep case also there was no business for lok sabha not to reinstate that hapless mp from lakshadweep within 24 48 or 72 hours Okay. On the sixtieth day, I moved the petition in the Supreme Court. The day the petition was moved, the government came lamely and said, "Of course, we are insisting. Why the petition?" Now, I hope and okay. trust we don't have to do that for Rahul Gandhi's case. Okay, Dr. Singh, we one final question. Therefore, in all of this, whatever has happened over the last four to five uh, months, do you believe there are serious question marks over the way trial courts and high courts function in this country? Are you somewhere or the other alluding to political partisanship? I want an honest answer from you on this. I I, I never go beyond uh, the record as far as possible. I think the best answer to your question is what was observed in the course of hearing today. Very frankly and candidly, the judges said that they were surprised by such orders, many of them emanating from Gujarat. In fact, in the course of that hearing, the Honorable Solicitor General was also on the screen, mm -hmm. and he kind of mildly and you know protested and said that please don't speak about Gujarat as a whole, and it has a demoralizing effect. And the judges were equally firm mm -hmm. and clearly said that look, uh, we are also very careful when we use these phraseologies. We are very restrained when we say so, but we cannot hesitate to say so because we are dealing with many judgments which have happened like that. Okay. Now I don't want to say more than what you saw on your screen, but I think if you read on the lines and between the lines, there is enough said there. Let me leave it there, then, uh, uh, Doctor Singhvi. I'm going to leave you to the colourful evening that you are likely to have, given, as I said, <laughs> the colour of your uh, of your shirt. But who knows what lawyers do on Friday nights? Since you all uh, <laughs> make far more money than any other citizen in this country, Monday no, to no, Friday. No, 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 no. Please don't say that. Don't say that. Okay, I won't say that. But. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Singh, we there reason to smile, beaming away after a few tough months. Thanks very much. You're saying within 48 hours you expect Rahul Gandhi to be reinstated. Now you saw on the other side of the screen earlier. I spoke to Mahesh Jaitpalani, who remember argued against Rahul Gandhi in court. Listen in to what Mr. Jaitpalani had to say. And joining me now is uh, Mahesh Jaitpalani, Rajya Sabha MP with the BJP, but also senior advocate who had appeared in the case against. Rahul Gandhi, May Jet Balani, the court, the Supreme Court seems to have come down quite heavily in a way on the way the Gujarat Trial Court and the High Court acted in this manner in giving Rahul Gandhi a two-year sentence. Do you agree with the basic court uh, line that this punishment was given without a application of mind 
without giving good reasons for giving a two year sentence yeah i mean uh, rajdeep that's the that's the only ground on which the conviction has been stayed the conviction has been stayed because the sentence uh, is uh, is an unreasoned uh, cons- is, has been delivered in an unreasoned order or an order where the reasons are not adequate enough mm-hmm. to justify a maximum sentence but you see the fact is that in itself gives the congress for example uh, the opportunity to say that the courts non application of mind caused a lot of grievance or uh, anguish to rahul gandhi he was he lost out his membership they will also say and insinuate that the gujarat courts uh, clearly uh, uh, overstretched and 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 failed to deliver a uh, uh, deliver justice Rajiv, uh, you know, they might say it, but they'll be ill-advised to make allegations against any judicial officer. Mm-hmm. But uh, they can certainly say that uh, the Supreme Court has, uh, uh, you know, said that the High Court had a uh, uh, passed a maximum sentence mm-hmm. without giving adequate reasons. That's the most you can cull out of it. But uh, you can criticize the judgment, and you can use the Supreme Court in your criticism. The Supreme Court's uh, order today, but you certainly don't uh, have the right to make attribute motives. to any court whether it's the uh, sessions court or the high court in gujarat and uh, you know ultimately let's look at the other side mm-hmm. this is a case where according to me the conviction is unimpeachable mm-hmm. if it wasn't if it wasn't for the sentence granted right and mm-hmm. for the reasons which the supreme court has uh, given today for staying conviction there would have been a conviction in effect so you are you are making an important distinction between the conviction for criminal defamation and the sentencing yes. of of 2 years you believe that rahul gandhi stands guilty of the charge of criminal defamation it's the sentencing which has been stayed because the sentencing was seen based on the non application of mind but many will believe that criminal defamation per se needs to be struck off the uh, 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 the statute books it has been struck off in many countries do you believe it's been misused in this instance to target rahul gandhi no i look let me tell you something uh, let me make my position very clear as far as i am concerned you know it uh, mainly because we have such a, a real, you know b- 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 backlog in the courts right criminal defamation cases uh, it take ages to complete right by the time you know the parties settle their matter and so on and so forth, by then the final court's decision come mm-hmm. so to, and you know it's uh, it's it, it is in a sense luxury litigation but when it comes to public servants they must be careful now you know what happened in this case is a case in point on i i'm not on the sentence now right the mm-hmm. sentence we all have to accept because the supreme court's ruling was excessive for, because it was given without adequate reasons all right as far as the conviction is concerned this is the second time it's happened first there was a contempt of court admonition then four days earlier to this incident on the 10th of april 2019 mm-hmm. he put words in the mouth of the supreme court and got an admonition and had to give an unconditional apology which he didn't do in the first instance right mm-hmm. so this is becoming habitual now i'm talking about the personality concern and the status he occupied right so as far as the stand the overwhelming evidence mm-hmm. and identifiable community of those people who bore the same name as the prime minister in this Is so it the that? conviction is, and look, the only reason why the sentence becomes important right, mm-hmm. is a because it was the maximum, and because that maximum sentence resulted in the disqualification. But tomorrow you take that out, I still believe Ra- Rahul Gandhi. I still believe Rahul Gandhi uh, will be convicted, right? And and the sentence could be one of jail. It may be anything from a month to two years. I don't know. The, you see the reason i'm asking you this the fact is for over 100 years no one got 2 years criminal defamation uh, uh, uh two years sentencing for criminal defamation and then when it happens to rahul gandhi naturally people raise question was it done to fix rahul gandhi you see that's that's been the question you're making as i said an important distinction between conviction and sentencing but there will be those who'll say that by that that token half our half our members in parliament would be convicted at some stage or the other the kind of statements remarks they made make about each other was rahul gandhi singled out what according to you is the big lesson from this case and the judgment look rahul gandhi doesn't have to be singled out the point is you have to have the guts if somebody calls you corrupt and this happens very often everybody calls everybody corrupt right mm-hmm. in politics if you take your reputation seriously as a politician you sue it's not it's not you know this is contrived if you take if you take your reputation seriously you will you will go and sue right 
Now, in this case, Rahul Gandhi made an excessive statement, right? He said, all Modi's are chores. And then he said, there's a further statement which is equally important, which has not been highlighted in the media. He says, if you find it, then you will get more Modi. So this was, this was malice of a forethought. He did it because of his hatred for the Prime Minister. He damned an entire community as thieves because of the Prime Minister. That's surely ex excessive and irrational. Can I, can I therefore ask you in conclusion, can I say conclusively this round goes to Rahul Gandhi uh, legally and politically, particularly legally? Do you agree that his lawyers uh, were saying from day one that the sentencing was completely, they believed, uh, ill-founded? The Supreme Court seems to have backed their claim. Can Rahul Gandhi claim victory as he and his supporters are? I mean, nothing succeeds like success, uh, Rajdi. And the Supreme Court has given given them that, uh, has, has accepted their arguments. Mm -hmm. We have to bow to the wisdom of the Supreme Court as well as the deafness of arguments from the council. Yes, mm -hmm. I, 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 I humbly accept defeat in this battle. Okay, but you still believe that the conviction will go through and that Rahul Gandhi will therefore not be able to get away on the conviction part. That's your belief. Am I correct? Uh, uh, Rajdeep, I, I, as a lawyer, I believe this is the case for conviction. But I'm not an astrologer, so I don't know what will happen in the future. Okay. Let me leave it there, uh, uh, Maya Jetmalani, uh, for joining us. Thank you very much. As always, combative. Good to have you on the show. Thanks very much.